Hey guys, my name is Jeremy and I'm the family pastor at the Sutherland campus. And I want to tell you a story about my son. I have three kids, but I want to tell you a story about my son, Logan. Now, Logan is a 17 year old junior at Sutherland High School. Logan's a good kid. Like he loves sports. Um, he loves going to school. He is that kid who loves going to school. Um, he loves history. Um, he, he also loves maps. I mean, that's an interesting uh, thing about him, but he loves maps um, and he's responsible. Uh, he does all the things. I mean, like if you look at his life, you know, as a parent, you're like, oh, he's such a great kid. Um, but we've had some ups and downs with him, just like any kid, just like, just like any parent with their child, there's ups and downs. And I remember one of the hardest moments we ever had with Logan was when he was about one years old. When he was about one years old, he kind of developed this really, really terrible issue of breathing. Uh, we, we took him to the doctor, to the, to the hospital to try to help with it. And, and so they, they essentially put this uh, thing around his face, this kind of face mask, and um, pumped him kind of some steroids to kind of open up his lungs so he could breathe a little bit. Um, and then like we, we'd put it away or they'd, they'd send us away. And then like a couple days later, he would develop it again. And so we'd go back. It was kind of the same thing for about a week or two over and over and over. And I remember on a, a Sunday morning, I don't remember why a Sunday morning, but I remember it was a Sunday morning. And I laid him on my chest. This is actually the picture of it. I laid him on my chest and I could just feel every rib breathing. Like, like I could feel it as he's breathing, the ins and outs, the ins, the breath in and the breath out. And I don't know what to do at this moment because the hospital keeps saying, you know, he's fine. It's just kind of a viral thing and it'll go away, but, but we're scared. And so we, we pack up our things and we go back to the, to the hospital and we plead with them to, to check him in, to admit him, to see what's going on. And so they, they, they relented and said, okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll keep him in for observation. Well, they kept him overnight. Well, the next day was Monday and I had to get up and go to work. Now, at that time, I was working two jobs. I was working at a paint store uh, from about seven in the morning to about four, four o'clock or so at night. And then from five o'clock to about 10 o'clock, I had kind of a swing shift at Target. And so I remember after my swing shift, I'm headed back to the hospital because they wanted to observe him another night because there's some issues that's going on that they can actually see now. And so I'm on my way up to the hospital and I'm scared about what's happening. And I am not a person that's moved by emotions. I, uh, I am a human, so I do have emotions, but I don't get easily swayed by those. But I pull into the uh, parking garage uh, of the hospital and I'm overcome with grief and overcome with this, this sadness about what is happening. And I, and I don't know what to do. And I make my way up to the hospital room and, and my wife who had been with uh, Logan all day uh, is actually in the restroom. She, she's taking a shower and it's just me and Logan in the room. And I see him in this crib and I don't know what to do. And, and I just feel like I need to be close to him. I need to be next to him. So I climb into this, this little crib with him and I'm trying to get around all the wires and the tubes and stuff. And, and I'm holding him close to me. And I remember saying to God, I said, God, please don't take my baby boy away. And I don't know why, and I don't even know how to explain it, but I felt that God was with me right there, that he was, he was next to me in that moment. And I have no idea I, how to explain or anything. It just felt that he was right next to me. Well, uh, shortly thereafter, Logan actually started getting better and they don't know how he got better or even why he got better, but he got discharged and he's never had a breathing issue since. Well, today I get the privilege in uh, sharing about out of Psalm 23, verse four. Again, I am a family pastor. It's what I do. I love doing what I do, but this is what uh, 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 Psalm 23, four says. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, the family pastor is gonna talk about death, uh, <laughs> but it, it goes on. It says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, I love this verse because there's like three characteristics that I see here. There's like three adjectives that I see here. I see power, right? I see power from your rod and your staff. So something's there is powerful. I see the beauty behind it that he's, that he's with us. And, and, and I see the mysteriousness that why would he lead us into a valley? 
So my goal for you today is for you to see that God is always, always with you through the ups and through the downs, through when you get that, that job promotion, um, when you get that house or when your kids are doing uh, well in sports and they're adjusting well in their new school system or, or, or when things aren't going so well, when you don't get that promotion or when you lose that job that you depended on. Or, or maybe your kids are having some struggles or maybe the kids you used to sit with at, at lunchtime aren't sitting with you anymore. In, in the ups and downs of life that, that, that God is with you everywhere you go. I, I think it's safe to say in the world that we live in, we deal with, with death a lot. And I'm not even just talking about the COVID, about the pandemic. We just deal with death in general. Sometimes it's just, it's just the, the death of a dream. We, we, we struggle with death throughout our lives. And the holidays are coming. And, 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 and it's sometimes for some of us, it feels bad or we feel bad that we need to be happy during the holidays when we're sad because the person that we loved is no longer with us anymore. And maybe they're not with us because they had to move away or maybe, maybe uh, they're, they're no longer here on earth, but, but the holidays are coming. It's gonna be this tricky time on trying to be happy and joyful and a time where you wanna break down and cry. You see, this verse refers not just to death. I know a lot of times we see this verse in uh, 23 verse four and, and we initially think of death, but actually it actually is translated to darkness. It's not just death. So it's, it's darkness uh, in, in terms of financial, medical, relational, but also what I feel, and I just referred to it is a death to a dream. One of the saddest moments with, with what was going on with Logan is the thought while I'm sitting in the parking garage that everything that I ever dreamed of and everything that I ever wanted to do with my son seemed like it was fading away in this death of a dream that was happening. So I wanna dissect this verse a little bit with you today. This is what it says. Number one, the shepherd allows time in the valley. The shepherd allows time in the valley. Verse, uh, the first part of verse four, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now for sheep to go to higher ground, they have to go through the valley. Now the higher ground is the marquee spot. It's, it's where the sun is at, so it's nice and warm. The grass is luscious and green. Um, I would imagine sheep want to be up there. And, and, and so, but, but that is kind of where you want to go. But to get there, you have to be led through the valley. Now in my limited amount of time with sheep, um, and, and full disclosure, I grew up around Chicago. And so um, we didn't really have a lot of sheep. We didn't really have a lot of pastures. We didn't really have those kind of things. We had, you know, streets and buildings. But, but my limited amount of time with sheep, meaning the internet, um, I have learned something about sheep is that sheep, as well as most animals, but sheep have really no concept of death but they do understand darkness. They understand it in the form of where it's dark, it's probably dangerous. So, so the shepherd is guiding the sheep through this dangerous, dark valley. Now, I, I want you to see this. God doesn't promise a free pass from hard times when we choose to follow him. But a lot of us, we feel like we should get a free pass. We, we should because we accepted Christ. We chose to follow him. We chose to, to do this thing called Christianity. And so we should have some things that kind of fall in our favor. So when the kids don't sit with us at lunch or when we don't get that job pr uh, promotion, it becomes very difficult and becomes very frustrating because God, why wouldn't you do this? Because I go to church, I give money, I do all the things that I'm supposed to do. Why is things not falling in my favor? But the reality is this, God doesn't promise a free pass, but he does promise his presence. That's what he promises. He doesn't promise things are always gonna work out for you. He promises that he is with you every step of the way, that you, that you are not alone. Now we want to feel God. Now I had a moment um, when, when my son Logan was in, was in the crib and I had a moment where I felt God with me. But there have been plenty of times since then where I didn't have that feeling of God next to me, where I had to go on what I felt God was leading me to do without having that, that God-touched feeling. 
in that moment of struggle, in that moment of grief. And too many of us, we, we're living for those moments where we're not going to go, we're not going to do anything until we get that, that God moment where we know. But there are some times in life when, when God doesn't, where it doesn't feel like God is there. But I want you to hear this. Just because you can't feel him doesn't mean you're not near him. One more observation about this text before we move on to the latter text. Why would the shepherd lead the sheep through the valley? Why would the shepherd lead the sheep through the valley? It's an interesting question. Because if it's for me, or if I would just, if I was the shepherd, I think the ideal spot is, you know, put the ranch on top of the high ground, not at the bottom of the hill. So you lead the sheep through the valley. No, I would put it up at the top. But I think the reason why, I believe the reason why is because the shepherd is trying to produce faith in the sheep. Faith that the shepherd is with them every step of the way in the dark times, in the scary times, as well as when things are good and okay and safe. You see, if everything always fell in your favor, would you even really need a shepherd? Would you really even need somebody to guide you through the lives of up and downs? Because the reality is we will go through another valley and Jesus will guide us out. And I want to change that just a little bit. Jesus can guide us out. I think there's a lot of us that we kind of identify with the darkness. We identify with like the negative things and it's so hard for us to be guided out because for whatever reason, we're drawn back to it over again and again and again. And Jesus is trying to move us away and we just keep falling back into the darkness. You see, we identify with it instead of identifying with our savior. I want you to hear this. The valley isn't always good, but our savior is. Our savior is always, always good. Now, because of the struggles and the issues that we had with Logan when he was um, about one years old. And, and we had struggles and issues between him um, for the next, you know, three or four years with different things because he's a kid and he's always in trouble, it felt like, or, or we want him to grow up too fast or whatever, or struggles between what, what's happening in just the family dynamic and the work world and all those kind of things. We had peaks and valleys in those moments, but because of who God is and because God was with us in those moments, I knew that he would be with us in a moment that, that changed everything for us. I have another child. Her name is Abigail. Now, Abby is 14 years old, um, and she has this weird thing where she's 14, but she really thinks she's 17. I don't know if you've ever experienced that with a teenage daughter or not, um, but, but she's sweet. She is definitely the sweetest person. Um, she's kind. She thinks of others. Um, she's, she's all those things, but at the same time, she's ultra competitive. Um, she, she has a mean streak when she plays basketball. I mean, she is, she is essentially me, really, uh, in, in that regard. But, but she is so fun. But a lot of you guys know, because I have shared about the things that we walked through with my daughter, there were some really difficult times we had with her. Before she was born, um, they did an ultrasound. They noticed that she had three holes in her heart and the veins around her hearts were actually backwards. And so they were debating on, do they do open heart surgery right away? Um, or do they wait a few days just to try to see how she's doing? And so what essentially happened is um, she was delivered and they decided let's wait it out. And so a week goes by and everything seems to be kind of going okay. And so they said, well, let's not mess with anything. Um, you know, as long as it's working, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And so um, they sent us home. So it was exciting. But about a month later, she was having her own breathing issues. And so we were back at the hospital again, now with another child with breathing issues. And so then what happened is they wanted to um, have surgery because her airway was just so small. And so um, they put her after the surgery, they put her in this uh, medically induced coma, all these kind of things were going on. And, and so it was scary and it was dark and it, it just felt like we were in this, this, this valley for such a long time. But God was with us during that time 
Now, I didn't have that feeling like I had with Logan, but I knew that he was with us because he was with us before. I knew he would be with us during this time in our life. So if the shepherd allows us to go through some difficult, t- difficult things, excuse me, he protects us in different ways as well. Much like how he protected my wife and I and Logan and Abigail through uh, the difficulties of that, where now she is completely healthy and she has no issues at all with any of her heart that she dealt with before, but God protected us during that time. So the second point is the shepherd will protect you in the latter part of verse four. This is what it says. It says, your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. As terrible as the valley is, the shepherd has some tools that he uses. This is a rod and this is a staff. Now, the interesting thing with the rod, now, now there are some uh, shepherds that the rod is at, actually at the end of the staff, um, but there are some shepherds that have a separate tool that is just spe- specifically just the rod. Now, how the rod is made, it is made from a root of an oak tree. So they would just chop off the root of the oak tree and then they craft it into this like two foot, essentially like a club. And, and so this, this rod, uh, it, it has two different characteristics that it shows. It shows power as well as it shows love. Now it shows, it shows power by um, it, when a predator or an enemy would come over towards the sheep, he would throw the rod to try to scare off the predator. Now, if a predator would grab a hold of a sheep, the, the shepherd could come over there and knock it in the head and then the, the, the predator would run off as well. Now, when there is fighting in between the sheep, like the shepherd would come over and kind of hit one of them on the side. And so it would kind of scatter away so they would stop fighting. But it's also function is love. It's also function because it's how it counted. So the shepherd would lay down the the rod and as the sheep would cross over it, he would count them. And the reason why that shows love is because it shows that it's part of the family. Now, now the staff is, uh, it shows uh, comfort. And how it shows comfort, because for one, the the shepherd would lean up against it when he would get tired from standing. So it's in a a comfort way like that. Also for the sheep itself, is that when a, a, a young lamb would get caught in the bushes or in the weeds, he could use the hook to kind of retrieve it out as well as if it's stuck in some water. So what does this mean? What do these tools mean for your life? It means this, it, 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 it protects us by disciplining us. Now, when I think of disciplining, I think of training. Now, I sport. I enjoy sporting I, I, for a lot of different reasons. It keeps you in shape, but it's just the competitiveness, fire. I mean, it's just great. I just love sports. Um, but one thing I never liked about sports, especially when I was in high school, was the training. Now, I was uh, a track runner back in high school, and um, to be on the track team, you had to be on what's called the 5 a.m. club. So you would get to the school at 5 a.m., two and a half hours before school started. And in that two and a half hours, you would run two to three miles every morning before school started. And then you'd be at school all day long. And then school got out about 2.30 for us. And then we'd be back at practice, this training preseason track practice until about five o'clock at night. I hated it, but at the same time, I loved it because it was building strength. It was building structure and it was building stability in my life. Now, my son, Logan, is a junior in high school, and uh, he's on the basketball team. And in the last week or so, they've just been training. He comes home. As I asked him, how's basketball? And he's like, I hate it. And I said, why do you hate it? He goes, all we do is run. And I'm like, you're in the training period because the training is built to give you strength, stability, and structure. But it's easy to be annoyed during the disciplining time because none of us like to be disciplined. But this could be the training that God has for you. Secondly, is that it, uh, he protects us by guiding us. Now, these verses that you see here, um, these are uh, part of your weekly devotion. But in John 10, it talks about how when, when uh, the, the sheep recognize the shepherd by his voice. That's what John 10 is saying here. 
Now, the only way that you know what his voice sounds like is if you know where it is found. And it's here in the word of God. This is what his voice sounds like. It's also the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Once you accept Christ, it's, it's that Holy Spirit who's speaking to you. Thirdly, is that he's rescuing us. That's how he protects us. He rescues us. When he rescues us, he puts us on solid ground and he equips us to stay there on that solid rock. Even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't maybe feel it, he's there again and again and again. And fourthly, by comforting us, by comforting us, he gets down to our level. Much like how a father gets down to his son's level or his daughter's level when they're hurt, he gets down to our level and he sees us. But not just that he sees us, but he binds up our wounds. He gets down to our level and binds up our wounds. Much like a shepherd, when a sheep falls down, he gets down to the sheep's level to help the sheep get healthy again. You see, he protects us by disciplining us, by guiding us, by rescuing us, and by comforting us. So I have a question I'd like for you to write down. Where are you in the flock? In the whole flock, where are you? Are you that sheep that's on the outside, maybe always in the ravine or whatever, but you're kind of on the outside, or are you that sheep that is right up against the shepherd. I want you to remember our goal. Do you see God everywhere you go? Do you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you every step of the way? For me, we had another valley that we went through just a few years ago. Um, my son Paxton is almost 10 years old. And this is him now. And uh, this picture here is when um, he was just about ready for his kidney surgery. And I remember when the doctor was saying, hey, there's some things going on with this kidney and we're gonna have to go in and fix it. And, and because of our other two issues that we had with our other two kids, you would think, by the way, I'll pause here. You would think we'd go, you know, we're kind of done with kids. Um, we, we've been through a lot of different stuff right now. Um, but, but, but with Paxton, we're like, you know, let's, let's move forward with this thing. But, but anyway, so he had a kidney issue. And, and so we were like, you know what, with all the things we had with our other kids, this should be easy. But I remember when people would pray for us and they say, hey, we're going to be praying for you and for Paxton. And it was so appreciated because of what they're doing and remembering us in those times. But the reason why I feel like it was easier for us, not because of the, the issues we had with Logan and Abigail, but because our shepherd was with us in those two times, we knew that he'd be with us again. And I remember when we were in the, the, uh, in the waiting room as the surgery was going on, I was sitting next to Nicole and I was holding her hand. And I remember looking at her and I said, you know what? If something goes wrong in this surgery, it'll be okay. Because, because God was faithful then, he's gonna be faithful now, now and he'll be faithful after. Essentially meaning he was present then, he'll be present now and he'll be present down the road. God was with us every step of the way. Now, I know that um, my story isn't like everyone's story, but I have had since then, that was about 10 years ago, I have had peaks and valleys since then. And I think each of us have experienced a really dark valley lately. And it's called the pandemic, it's COVID. And it feels like this thing will never end. It feels like we're just when it feels like we're maybe on the, on the end of it in some way or in some fashion, it's almost like we get hit back with something else. A new, uh, a new virus, you know, comes out or not virus, but a new uh, thing comes in and it just wipes us out again. Then we're back on some lockdown or back on some restrictions or these mandates that are going on and all this kind of stuff. And it's easy to feel like it's just us again and, and God has abandoned us. But again, just because you may not feel him does not mean that he is not near you. He is with you every step of the way. Remember, the valley isn't always good, but our shepherd is. Our shepherd is always, always good. He's always here with us. His presence is everywhere you go. I'm gonna read a passage to you and it's found in, in Psalm 139. And it's verses seven through 12. 
David who writes this, he says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become the night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. So this is a difficult passage, it's a difficult text, but I believe that God is with you every step of the way, much like how the, the, the shepherd is with the sheep every step of the way in the valley as well as in the high ground. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being with us every step of the way, whether we realize it or not, or whether we don't want to leave the dark valley because we, for some reason, it keeps drawing us back. Let us know that you're trying to guide us to where you want us to go. And for some of us, we, we need to be guided through these dark valleys so that we can learn to trust in you and believe that you're with us no matter what, when things are great or when things aren't so great, that you are with us every step of the way. So God, help us to show your goodness to people around us. Help us to live a life that honors you, live a life that is for you as we're walking through this valley of the shadow of death or when we're on the high ground. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. I have a couple uh, next steps for you. The first one, we've been working through Psalm 23 and uh, we've done verse one, two, three, but I would like for you to memorize Psalm 23 verse four, okay? Um, secondly is this, I want you to share with someone how the presence of the shepherd has shaped the view of your life. Have a great week and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys soon.